Now, moving on now, as Rishi Sunak committed to sending millions in humanitarian aid to Gaza, he also focused on his longer-term ambitions for peace between Israel and the Gaza region, saying that the renewed creativity was needed in efforts towards a two-state solution. Well, joining us now is the Independence Chief Political Commentator, John Rental. John, thank you so much for joining us. Keir Starmer echoed Sunak's sentiments in the comments yesterday, but was it expected for both of the party leaders to step up on this issue? Yeah, I mean, Keir Starmer is pursuing a very obvious uh, strategy of sticking as closely to the government's line as possible. He doesn't want any uh, daylight to be opened up between the, the government and, op and the opposition on this, on this issue because he wants to put to bed the, uh, the, the, the Corbyn years when, uh, when you know, Jeremy Corbyn took a very different view uh, on these issues. Um, but having said that, he was, he was careful to emphasise um, uh, international law uh, and he did that a bit more than, uh, than he has done hitherto because he's worried about, uh, about his own backbenchers. John, the truth is welcome. It, it's, it's a very difficult position. It was interesting to have um, a Palestinian's take on, on this solution, because, well, this situation, because there is no doubt the Middle East is, is front and centre and, and will continue to be so, and God knows what's going to happen. Does the announcement, despite politicians saying and doing the right thing for fear of whatever, does the announcement of 10 Britons dying change anything in your mind? Well, it ought to. I mean, I think it really ought to focus people's... Uh, minds on the hostages. I mean, I do think it is surprising, you know, when you when you see people taking to the streets of London to mm. uh, to say Palestine must be free, uh, as as an immediate reaction to the awful events of uh, of the seventh of October. Uh, I just find that uh, I, I find that personally uh, offensive. But um, you know, we have free speech in this country, as you were discussing earlier. Well, I was going uh, to pick you up on that. Um, Peter Bletsley and Hamish Brown, total different opinions on, on the police. Mm -hmm. um, I keep saying, and I will continue to say, that, of course, there is freedom of speech in this country, and that's right. It frightens me to think, John Rental, that the police are too scared to grab the few who are shouting jihad, which can mean holy war, for fear of reprisal. That terrifies me about what it says about where we are as a country. They're all blaming each other. The police are saying it's not in the statute book. Peter Blexey said it is. Yeah. He's saying, which I have to say, agree, maybe the police don't want to overstep the line. I mean, it, it's not... It's just another thing that typifies where people will quite rightly think this country's on its backside, right? Well, I think that's, that's going a bit too... I don't. Um, I mean, I think, that, you know, there was... Uh, you know, there were some people holding up placards saying, I support Hamas. I mean, you might as well hold up a placard saying, uh, I insist on being arrested now. Um, but they but weren't they were. arrested, John. Uh, yes, they but, weren't arrested. Uh, absolutely. So, so is it in your mind the government's fault or the Metropolitan Police ineffectively? I mean, and I it, take the knee, don't arrest somebody saying, I support Hamas who murdered 1,400 people. Yeah, no, I, I agree. That was a failure, failure of policing. Uh, but I did think that Suella Braverman was uh, was playing politics with the issue by mm. suggesting that uh, that the law needs to be tightened, uh, and the and the police were doing the same thing, suggesting that the law needs to be tightened. It is already uh, it is already unlawful to uh, to glorify terrorism or to support Hamas. Yeah, um, and on Rishi Sunak, he said that the explosion at the hospital in Gaza, he sort of confirmed today, mm. was likely caused by a missile launched from within the territory towards. Israel, obviously, when that news initially broke, there was a lot of confusion, mm, wasn't there? There was. Certain news outlets Indeed. immediately went with Israel has bombed well, you, Gaza, etc. You're not mentioning the BBC, for example. Uh, but the BBC right. said it was an Israeli uh, airstrike, and that was, uh, that was a terrible, terrible error. And, um, you know, the New York Times has published a, a correction and withdrawal today, and I'd like to see the BBC do the same thing. Right, and that but hasn't happened yet. But they won't call Hamas terrorists. Well, I mean, I, do, Just I think saying. yes, no, I know no, they won't. But I mean, I do think that's that's a displacement activity is to argue over terminology. Uh, I think what's mo much more important is that the mm. BBC should should check. Um, it, it's, it it's very interesting, John. Before it attributes blame to a yeah. group that could be so devastating to so many people, yeah. because immediately yeah. we saw on social media things. And I remember you said turn. you said to me in the studio, 
it, there was a the screen and you went, well, is that the car part? Do you remember us yeah. having that conversation? Mm. The problem with this conflict is misinformation, be it by high-tech oh, companies well, or being by newspapers or, or whatever, and trying to report the facts. But you're right, Nick. The first thing we all thought was Israel had launched a bomb, 500 people, and they've died. The yeah. hospital's flattened. Then it came out that it didn't hit the hospital. Then it came out that it was... An, and and that's been verified by the US and the UK. But none of that makes this situation any more edifying, well, does it? No, but it's very important that... that uh, you know, respectable news organisations, yeah, completely agree. Uh, such as the BBC, get I it right, yeah. and if they get it wrong, they should they should withdraw and apologise immediately. Because it right. affects diplomacy as well. Because we saw that yep. Joe Biden had his meeting then cancelled with Arab leaders in Jordan, yeah. off the back of of that particular incident. I don't know how much you know influence the BBC would have had over right, that, but we yeah. can, we can presume that an awful lot of people would have would have kind of taken more of a side as a result of that, um, but yeah. I I, it's well, I agree, I mean, the, the, but the other, the other thing is that, that in a situation such as this, there are going to be conspiracy theories on the internet. Yep. And for, the, you know, for, for responsible news organisations to feed those conspiracy theories, I think, is, uh, is a terrible thing. Where do you believe this goes, John? Uh, well, sadly, you know, I've, I've been writing editorials for The Independent for two decades now, um, calling for a two-state solution. Uh, and every time I return to the subject, it seems seems further away. I mean, it is absolutely tragic. Uh, the missed opportunities, if you look back, uh, the missed opportunities to make peace. Um, and, you know, clearly, clearly both sides are, t are to blame for that. But I, I think you've got to you've got to ask what Yasser Arafat uh, was doing when he rejected a, you know, a, a it was a, in a way it was a terrible deal, but it was far better than anything the Palestinians. I read the other day that the, the offer that Clinton gave to Yasser Arafat was ninety percent of what he wanted, and he turned it down. Yeah. Flat. I'm not, I'm not taking sides, and I've and I've said throughout all of this, what's happening uh, in Gaza is is appalling, but I can't get away from what happened three weeks ago, and I genuinely believe if the Gazan people could get rid of Hamas as well, they would... I'm sure there would be a, a, a much simpler way of, of gaining peace, but God only knows. John Rental, thank you so much indeed, Bobby. Thank you. John Rental from The Independent. What a man.